Hello right, guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Motorcycle Fixer. In this video we're going to carry on fixing our Kiwi RKS125. We've got a few more jobs we need to do to it before we can sell it on. If you like the video don't forget to hit the like button down below as it really does help the channel. So without further ado, let's get on with it. If you watched the last video you'll know that we had to straighten the frame. Yeah, because the foot peg was bent. Now I've got to weld a tab back in the corner there, and to do that, I need to clean this, um, clean this all up. Uh, ready for welding. At the moment, it's all a bit rusty and jagged edges. So, so I'm just going to get my die what die grinder, clean all this up, ready for welding. I'm going to take this foot peg off first. I've already cleaned the web up needs to be welded into that corner so now I just need to clean this part of the frame ready for welding so I've got my little die grinder I don't want to take too much material off I just want to clean the rust off and make sure this is a nice surface to weld to I think that's about as much as we need to clean off. That's pretty clean now. No big rust spots in it. As always, don't forget to wear your safety specs. To weld it up, I I've lay the bike down on its side. Hopefully, try and get a better angle underneath. I'm no welder, but hopefully I'll be able to make it better than what it is at the moment, so. I'm going to warm this metal up first. plate is definitely on there as you can see it's not coming off it's not the best welding and like I said I'm not showing you but that's it finished so that's another job done just gonna put some black spray over the bare metal parts You're not going to see any of this, but it's just, just to stop it from rusting, really. And there we are. As you can see, I'm not a spray, I'm not a painter either. That foot peg will never come loose again, and now it's better than when it came out the factory. Probably. Anyway. <laughs> While we've got the engine on the floor, 
I'm going to check the valve clearances. Make sure they are correct. It's easier to get to them while the engine is on the floor rather than being back in the bike because it's easier to get to them. So just got to take the cap off either side. I'm just going to show you one. The other side is exactly the same. We need to remove this side cap so that we can get at the nut to turn the engine over. This is just a 10 mil Allen key. There we are, and then we got our nut inside. We're going to use that to turn the bike over. What size is that? That's a 17. So I'm just going to let me just put this on the valve. Just going to turn this over. Until the valve comes up. And the engine is at top dead center. On the compression stroke. How do we find top dead center I hear you say. Ah well. <laughs> it is so easy. We're going to take the spot plug out. If you've seen this series of pit bike videos and you see me do this before, it's really easy. We're going to remove the spark plug, like so. Then we're going to put a ball ended Allen key down the spark plug hole, like so. And turn the engine over until the Allen key, oh wrong tool, turn the engine over until the Allen key is at the highest point. Make sure you don't jam the Allen key in the hole. Right so there, it's up and then it wants to go back down, rock it back and forth, there. So there, the engine is, is at top dead center. So now we can check the valve clearances. I have a little valve key that I bought off eBay for, I think it was like five pounds or something. So I find it easier to do with this. But you can just hold the top with the pliers. So I'm just gonna undo the nut. And then I'm gonna turn that. Ah. Okay, so it sprung, so that's why we didn't have any that's why we didn't have any clearance, is because the actual lever itself is sprung to follow. So okay, that's no problem. The manual gives the valve clearances for this, um, the inlet 0 0.05 to 0 0.07 millimeters and the exhaust is the same 0 0.05 to 0 0.07 millimeters. So that's quite tight really. We've slackened this off now, so we want to lift the follower and put this feeler gauge underneath it. Then what we want to do is gently wind in this, the valve adjustment screw on the top and we need a nice sliding fit with our feeler gauge. The problem is 
because it's spring loaded it's difficult to get a slider fit if you know what I mean okay and then once you've got that slide in fit you need to tighten this nut up to keep it in place that's a 10 mil spanner so not tight and there were all five feeler gauge goes in when he jest and I know the old eight but we'll try it and the 0.8 feeler gauge won't go in it there we are I'll just try that again with the 05 just to check very difficult when it's sprung, I gotta be honest. I think I might need to just slacken that back off a little bit. If you look at the flats on the valve adjuster screw, you can. Turn the flat a little bit just to loosen it off a touch and then you can see then by looking at where the flat is how much you've turned it so let's see if our 05 will go in there now our 05 will go in there now but it's probably a bit wide let's see if our 08 will go in It is fiddly, but once you get it right, it's right. It's good. So what oh wait just goes in. So we need to just Move it back a little bit, check it again, see if the 08 will go in. And this time it doesn't go in, so that's our valve clearance is set. On the inlet side I'm not going to show you the other side because it's exactly the same so I'm going to do that now and then we'll move on to the next the next thing I need to tackle is something I found when taking the bike apart it's um, spade that's supposed to fit on the coil it is just very very loose so what we can do with this is we can just squeeze down the, the, the ends of the spades so that it's a nice fit a tight fit on there Ow. so with these pliers I'm just gonna squeeze the ends of the spade one on that side, one on that side, then hopefully that should be tight and not come back off. There we are, that's another job fixed. Now that we've fixed our foot peg hanger, the, neck, the first thing we need to do to put the engine in is to line up our swinging arm with the frame and just put our bolt in the first part. It can be a bit fiddly 
because the shock absorber is still attached. Um, in the past I have had to undo this shock absorber so let's see how we get on a minute and if we can't do it with it attached then we'll then we'll undo it but let's see so all we just need to do is to maneuver the swing arm into position and then we'll be able to put our swing arm bolt in just to start it off like so just don't stick it out too far because you don't want it to stop the engine going in what you want to make sure of is that your swing arm bolt is greased because they can be a nightmare in the future they can be a nightmare to remove if they are just left dry so I always put lashings of grease on the swing arm spindle in the past when I've had the shop I've had to cut the swing arm off to get the bolt out of the engine so that you don't have to destroy the engine it's cheaper to buy an old swing arm than it is to buy an old engine so okay now that we've got that greased up we need to put the engine in I like to just put a block underneath to help lift the engine up a little bit and then we got to We need to just lift our engine up onto the block. Make sure, like this clutch cable, make sure that it's rooted around the right side. And then this engine, the hole for it is there, and we needed it to be up in there. So it is a bit fiddly on your own, to be honest with you. If I had a scissors lift now, I could just lift that up into place, but I, uh, I don't have one at the moment, so... I think... I may need to call some help, I think. Ready? Yeah. Put your mile out. Let's have another go, see if I can... So I'll hold it a bit of this. Try and jiggle it back. Oh, stop me, I'm going up. Almost. Yeah, but now once I get to there, I can't. Oh, there. Really? Yeah. Come on. Right. Tap that bolt in. It's not going in. Obviously, right, I'll jiggle it. Go on. Keep tapping. There we are. Oh yeah, keep tapping it. Just keep tapping it. No, no, no. Keep jiggling. Right. Here we are. And that's it, all the way through. Thank you very much. That was a pain in the bum, wasn't it? Aye. I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own now. So thank you very much. Do it now. Don't get to do it in that coat. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have the main swing arm bolt in. It's best to put, don't tighten it up until you've got all the bolts. So there's the one in the top, there's the ones in the front, and there's another one underneath. Put them all in loose and fit them all. And don't tighten one up until you've got them all in um, and lined up and then you'll find it a lot easier so we've got the ones here that go 
through the frame and then you've got a DL shaped one that goes on the other side on the back with the two nuts on the back Again, you want to put grease on all these bolts so it makes it easier for you to undo them in the future if you ever need to. And then this is this is the one that goes through the engine at the top. There we go. Before we fit the engine mount on the front, we just need to connect this oil pipe back up because when the plate flips over, then it's more difficult to get to that. Place our clutch cable where it needs to go. Oh. As you can see that that bottom nut there is quite difficult to get to so just want to do this as we when we've got access to it there we go Let's just check if there's anything else we need to fit while we have access I not sure may will the starter motor come off and go back on yes I think that's gonna be okay so we do have the starter motor cable here so we'll just tuck that up there up to the way a minute and then there's our engine cradle on the front And there's our engine cradle on the front. Not forgetting to grease our bolts. Just going to put them all just in loose. I, mean, I need to grease this one. There we go. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. There we go. Another one. this top one and then make sure it's creased give it a little jiggle and then it it goes so that's all our engine bolts or oh, apart from the one at the bottom there's one underneath at the bottom here so you can see that this one that goes underneath the back how corroded it is obviously there was no grease on this one so before we put it back in we're gonna give it copious amounts because the one at the bottom under the engine is the one that gets covered in water and washed so there we go now go straight through so that's all our engine bolts in place and now we just go around and put the nuts on and tighten them all up Now that I've tightened all the frame bolts, this is one underneath the back of the engine, the main f uh, swing arm one, there's one at the top of the engine and then there's the two at the front. So now they're all tight, I need to reconnect the clutch. 
I mark the top of the clutch arm and I mark the top of the clutch uh, pinion so I'm going to put that back on as it came off like so and then put our bolt through back through is that where it was or does it need to go around one We're gonna put our clutch back on, but first we're gonna we're gonna put some put a lot uh, some grease on it just to keep it nice. And then let's put our clutch on back on the pinion and put the screw back in. That's the clutch connected up and working then. So we've got to just connect our engine breather back up, put our spark plug cap back on. Okay, we're around the other side of the bike, and something now that's really important when you take the engine out of a bike, it's very important you remember to put the earth lead back on because if you don't you'll wonder why your bike won't run so the earth lead for the engine is very important oh yeah that's where it came from that's where this goes back to and we just need to connect our connectors back up now. So this one is from, and we'll pick up, there we are. So we need to connect, just connect the connectors. They'll only go in They'll only fit in one, so you can't mix them up, so you just got to make sure you put all of those back in securely. And then there's another one here from our stand switch, which I only took off so that I can move it out the way, but... And which way does this go? That is correct, yes, there we are. And that's our wiring connected back up as well so if, we, if you can fit the shroud back over the connectors then that's always good this stops the water going in there so try and get them in there as much as possible although it's not a great fit I know and then this tucks up out of the way with a cable tie. Okay, that's that. Now we just need to fit the carburetor into the inlet manifold. which just presses in. Uh, is this the right side? No, it needs to come this side. So there we are, I think. This side. There we go. On the back of the carburetor, there's a, there's a tab. Uh, can you see it? That, this tab here. And on the inlet manifold, if I can just move the camera a little over. And then there's a, a slot in the carb there. And this slot on the carb right there needs to fit in there so that it's uh, in the right orientation. So I can just push that in and then 
twist it back and forth until it's all the way in and that little uh, that little tab is in between the right place on the rubber so that's our carburetor fitted and that's all okay so let's just check and our chalk works yes that works and our throttle works properly yes so this is all okay now and it check uh, the throttle response with the um, with the handlebars at full lock either way because there is snapping back but when I move the handlebars all the way around to there it's not going all the way back see turn to there it's not going all the way back so there's a problem somewhere with our throttle cable so I'm glad I checked that actually our throttle cable root in is not correct somewhere so let's try that again so snaps back there if I can move this other way be good that's full lock to the right if I full lock it to the left see it's opened up a gap this is not correct okay we need to do something about that it's, ja it's getting jammed up somewhere see that's working both sides now when you when you get it all back together, just make sure that both l l right hand lock and left hand lock, make sure that it is snapping back into place both sides. The carb is tightened up now on the uh, clip on the hose clip, so that's all okay. The next thing I need to fit is our gear lever. So again, I'm going to give this a bit of grease. And then... So I want our gear lever was kind of in... this position I think or somewhere close I think I'm gonna have to adjust this when I have the when I put the foot peg on to see where it's most comfortable so we'll just fit it there for now that seems pretty good there So that should be in neutral there, yeah. So, so I'm go I'm gonna tighten this up because you should never put a bolt in and not tighten it. And the reason you should never put a bolt in and not tighten it. And the reason being that this, if this is in the right correct position when you put the foot peg on, you may forget to come back and tighten it up. So whenever you put a bolt in, make sure it's tight. And then if you do need to adjust it later, then fair enough. But if you don't, you know it's correct. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to tighten that up then. There we are. Nip it up. lovely job okay another job that needs doing on this bike is 
the air box to carburetor pipe is or was not fitted correctly into the air box so I need to take the air box off fit this I'll put some RTV compound around this and then fit this correctly so that the air is being filtered and not just coming straight in past this and into the carburetor so to take the air box off I need to remove these bolts on the top and this one has come out but lo and behold the other one is just spinning out no oh don't you just love it when that happens that's very annoying so the only way now is that there's an insert pressed into the plastic on the airbox and it's spinning inside the plastic so it's obviously not very well made um, the only way really to get that out of there is to break the insert out of the plastic so what I had to do is just to put my big screwdriver in between the frame and the airbox and then lever it down to pull the insert out of the airbox. So hopefully now I should be able to remove it from the bike. There we are and you can see if I remove the pipe from there right. uh, just take this engine breather pipe off and you can see on there where the insert has broken out you can see this one has got a threaded insert in it this one had a threaded insert but it was just spinning in the plastic so that's why that one was just spinning What I need to do now is to get some RTV, which I found out stands for Room Temperature Vulcanizing, which means it's like a rubber compound and it goes off at room temperature. So there's no need to heat it up or anything. And then I need to refit our rubber manifold. And then I can put this back on the bike. To fix this airbox rubber now, I've got the RTV silicone room temperature vulcanizing silicone which I learned the other day I've already said uh, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to fill in the this groove if I can get any out Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Right, I'm going to fill this groove around. There's a bit of something stuck in there. Fill this groove all the way around. It doesn't seem to want to come out. Let's have a look why. make sure it's all the way around now just to make sure the seals on the airbox because you don't want it to suck in too much air especially after the filter you don't want unfiltered air unfiltered air in the petrol air mixture if there's dust and stuff in it it'll mark your cylinder bowl we need to fit this 
to a wood air box. So <clears throat> sometimes it's a good idea to warm it up first, actually. It doesn't seem to fit very well to be honest. But okay. It is a bit fiddly, but there we go. There we are. And then the other side comes out, but okay. It doesn't seem to fit the best, to be honest. It doesn't seem to fit the best, to be honest. So I'm going to run. I'm going to run a bead of this silicone all the way around. And then when it cures, it should seal it and hold it in place. last bit fill up all the gap all the way around Okay, there we have it. We're going to leave that set now before we fit it to the bike. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this video. We need to wait for the casket to cure on the airbox. I need to order a new front sprocket because this one is hooked. And so while we're waiting for those to come in, then I'll upload this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button below. It really helps me out as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And most importantly, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.